So they let us check into the campsite early. Yay! So let's go check this out, set up camp. Aloha from Hawaii. Last weekend I took the girls camping. We went to Bellows Air Force Campground. This is not to be confused with Bellows Beach Park Campground, which is actually not on the Air Force Base. It is right outside the Air Force Base. So for this video, know that I am talking about all the facilities that are located on the actual base past the guard. And this is separate from the before the gates, which is public access on the weekends and you have a public uh, campground that you can access. And so I really, instead of doing a vlog style video, which is what we normally do here on this channel, I wanted to make the video that I was actually looking for when we wanted to go and do this camping trip. I want to share with you guys what this experience is like, what you can expect from going to Bellows Air Force Base to stay at the cottages, to stay at the campground, and kind of some what are pros and cons to this area. But the girls and I stayed at what is known as the Lettered Campground. There's actually three different campgrounds on the base itself. Let's go on a walkabout. Let's go check this place out. There's also cottages, there's also condos that you can stay in, but really the camping, the campsites, is what we experienced and it's also the most affordable. So like not getting too far into it, like your your basic family campgrounds can have up to 10 people, they're $30 a night. You can have some that are on the beach right there. First come first serve in terms of reservations, they're a little harder to get, but you also have a lot less privacy with those beach campsites. I saw people going through that area in and out all day long and you're gonna have the lettered campground, that's where we stayed at. And you have, of course, like it's in the woods, there's more privacy. And then you have the big group campsites that can have up to 75 people, and I think they're $140 a night. But still, it's a lot of people, and those are gonna be in your, the big field. There's no shade, but uh, you've got all the space you need to have one massive party with your friends and family, like a big get together. And I did see a couple groups there, which was awesome. This is the best. Yeah. Each camping area had bathrooms, showers, and a sink to wash dishes. There was also a convenience store, a little exchange with a gas station there which meant, which was nice because you could, you didn't have to pay the same price as gas the rest of Hawaii. You got pretty much like your, your military price for gas. Their campground, it's got laundry facilities. One of the other benefits that was there was the laundry machines that were there. That's also nice for people who are staying for a week and enjoying Oahu. So you can have a propane cook stove at each site. There's it. also a barbecue grill. You just cannot have an actual campfire. That was probably the one big downside that I saw. So you got all your basic camping supplies. Not the 
You are also allowed to string up hammocks. Now let's talk about some of the pros to actually staying here. Like why would you choose to do this? Obviously the first one is going to be the price. You are not going to be able to beat the price for staying at one of these campsites, especially if you want to go have a vacation, but you have a tight budget. One of the biggest things that you would spend on one of your vacations to Hawaii is going to be your hotel. Even if you're trying to do um, Airbnb, know that a lot of Airbnbs are illegal unless you have a month-long stay. And Hawaii is really starting to crack down. Good evening. I'm Rick Kwan. And I'm Marissa Yamane in for Mika Miyashima. Oahu is now one step closer to banning short-term rentals in most residential areas. So you really can't beat the price, right? You guys, like... $30 for an oceanfront or a wood family campground that can have up to 10 people. Nowhere else on the island are you gonna have the facilities and the safety of being on a base and the convenience of being all right there. That leads into like, of course, some of the other perks. You're on one of the best swimming beaches on the island, right between Lanakai and Waimanalo Beach. This side of the island has the softest sand and fewest rocks, meaning it is great beach for swimming and you have a great view of the mokes. Lanakai means heavenly sea. This is the beach that is just east of Belos and it is consistently ranked as one of the top beaches in the world. You could not ask for a better location on a walk. You are away from the crowds of Waikiki and you have a nice calm atmosphere to truly relax on your vacation. You know, I think, uh, I think that was my favorite part of this whole trip. If you're not the ocean, a twilight. The second pro to this, you're on a military base, which means that you have access to WMR and all of the equipment rentals that you can have. On this facility, you have putt-putt mini golf, you've got a driving range, and you can rent equipment right there from MWR, which is in the Turtle Bay. It's right behind the check-in desk. You also can rent kayaks, you can rent sleeping bags, you can rent all kinds of equipment that you may want. Right there you've got tennis courts, basketball courts, room to go play football with your family. You can go adventure in the woods, and there's paintball right there on base, so if you wanted to go play paintball, that's also there. And of course you have the ocean. The sunrise was magical. Just amazing and so, so beautiful. Um, if I had a little bit older kids or if John was with me, I would have totally just left my family and gone out and just watch the sunrise from the beach, but instead I had to watch it from my campsite. But even still, just listening to the birds in the morning and the smell, I... When you're there, just stop and literally take it all in. Just don't think about anything else. Take it all in. Okay, so a couple of things that you guys need to know before booking your stay at Bellows Air Force Base. One, you are on the windward side of the island. So for the same reason that made those beaches great for swimming with the soft sand, the wind and the rain. If you have an oceanfront site or even a cottage, expect a lot of wind. It's not going to be a lot of downpouring rain, but it's definitely going to be a lot of drizzle on and off. You're probably going to only see it drizzle once in a day. While there are no mountain lions, there's no coyotes, you're not gonna see, you know, snakes, alligators, all the things that you need to be a little bit aware bears on the mainland, especially of young kids. And even if you don't have young kids, you still need to be aware. 
you don't have those things on Hawaii. But what you do have are centipedes, and you really don't want to be bitten by a centipede. I'm Coyote Peterson, and I'm about to be bitten by the giant desert centipede. Here we go. Ah! Oh! oh my gosh, it's so much worse than a bullet ant sting! I nearly stepped on a centipede when I went out. It, it must have been only 8 o'clock at night. I was just cleaning up our campsite. The girls were already in bed. And I nearly stepped on one and I saw it move. It was probably an inch from my foot. And I quickly backed up, turned on the light, and sure enough, there was that centipede. And he was like this long. That was a long, like, you do not want to be bitten by a centipede. And know, like, that they're always somewhat around. So, if you leave your tent unzipped during the day, there's a good chance that a centipede is going to be in your sleeping bag when you get there at night. Don't do that. The same thing that made, you know, the rain and the wind is what really makes this a beautiful sand beach. But it's also going to make it very murky, choppy, and you're not going to have waves for surfing. You might have them for boogie boarding, but definitely not really for surfing. You'll see a couple people try, but it's kicks and giggles. Um, and you're not going to have a great snorkeling experience. My recommendation is that you go to the very opposite end of the island for snorkeling. You're going to go to the leeward side of the island. That is where the great snorkeling is because they don't have as much rain. They're not pounded by the constant currents that hit the windward side. It is amazing clear blue water for snorkeling. If you're looking for surfing, yes you have the North Shore, but be very careful of the North Shore. The North Shore can a lot of people get rescued all the time from the North Shore. My suggestion is if you're a beginner or new to surfing, there's always Waikiki. It's great surfing in Waikiki. And you also have White Plains Beach. White Plains Beach is located next to the Barbers Point Cottages, part of the Coast Guard, which means they also have an MWR facility right there at the beach, and you can rent a surfboard for $5. White Plains Beach is probably your top beginner-friendly beach for surfing on Oahu. Overall, I think the campground and the facilities were amazing. For $30, you could have a wonderful weekend vacation, or even you could stay there for a week, like you come out from the mainland. I highly recommend that experience, especially if you're on a budget. I uh, run off some of that dinner, fed them, and now they're all energy. The cottages look nice, but in terms of price point, you're approaching a room with the helicoba. Okay, I'm back to get on this but I think for you guys, you have to decide what kind of experience you're looking for. The cottages, of course, are gonna have, I think, a full kitchen in them, and they're gonna have more privacy. You're right on the beach, and you're not in the hustle and bustle of Waikiki. So you will have to choose what vacation, what experience you are really looking for. If you wanna check out more videos on the Halekoa, you can check those out right here. Otherwise, thank you guys for watching. If you've enjoyed this, please do give me a thumbs up. It really does help me out. Mahalo. We'll see you later.